Back when I was a cop, I used to fall for this lie. And uh, if you're a cop, maybe you're falling for it now. But here's how it went. The administration would tell me, and they'd tell everybody, that, you know, we're keeping your training records, uh, our post-training records, we're keeping those so that you can defend yourself. Just in case you ever get sued, we want to have that, that training record so you can prove that you've had this, you know, eight-hour LIDAR training or, or this four-hour use-of-force training or the, the two-hour Kubaton training or the 16-hour whatever custody and control training and then the, the, the 28-hour uh, riot and crowd control training. We're doing this so that, so that you can defend yourself if you ever get sued. <laughs> I believed it. And I thought, you know, what a, what a great thing that the, the department is looking out for my best interest. That's great. Because a lot of time the, the administrators can kind of be annoying and, and, and they're, not the, they're not the part that, that makes the job fun or good or, or rewarding. It's, uh, it's, it's other things. And, and so I, I thought, you know, finally they're doing the right thing and they're, they're here to help. <laughs> and, uh, no, here, here's the, here's the real, the real truth of it. They are doing all this documentation and, and having me document it, having you document it to cover their own butts by throwing us under the bus. And here's how it goes. Let's say that we're, we're talking about uh, custody and control training. During that training, you can be darn sure that the lesson plan that the trainer gives to the department that, that he submitted to post when that became a post certified training. You are, and by the way, if there's somebody watching this who isn't a cop, post is police officer standard and training. It's a common thing in many states. So part of what he submits to post when he, before he does his training is a, a kind of a syllabus, uh, an overview of what, he, what it is that he's teaching about. And part of that syllabus will be, for example, don't tighten the cuffs too much. And make sure you double lock the handcuffs so that once the person's sitting in the car and they're squirming around, that they're not tightening them on themselves and then ending up cutting off circulation, hurting themselves. Well, that'll certainly be a part of the course. That'll be part of those 200 pages of, of <laughs> training uh, training material that he'll hand to you. Yeah, there'll, there'll be several articles about that. You're now, of course, never going to read that. You're just enjoying the class, looking forward to lunch, and you can go get a beer. At least that's what I think everybody's still doing. And uh, I don't know, maybe things have changed. But anyway, you get all this training documentation. Here's what you do. Here's what you should do. And then, of course, during the class, you're making jokes about, yeah, I might forget if the guy's a jerk, you know, some contempt of cop. And, and uh, yeah, we're going to tighten the cuffs a good bit. And you're hearing other folks making these jokes. And you're not taking it incredibly seriously. But in the end, you've taken the four-hour training and uh, that little tiny sliver of it that talked about double locking and, and not not tightening them too tight, that's not that's not what in your brain it was the emphasis of the class. You go out on patrol a few years later, a few weeks later, you wrestle somebody, you get them in cuffs, stuff them in the back. Let's say you, you didn't double lock the cuffs. There was just too much going on at the moment. You didn't do it. And now they're in the back there and they're tightening up more and they, they end up hurting themselves. Their, their hands turn blue or whatever, or just even red marks around there. They end up suing the department. They sue you, of course. And what do you think is going to happen? I think the department is going to go look at post records and say, nope, this is a good officer. He received good training. This was an honest mistake and we stand behind. No, they're going to throw you under the bus. Here's what the department's going to do. The department is going to say, we brought in this fancy trainer. This is what the fancy trainer taught the, the officer. And the officer should have known better. He went against our policy. Uh, we're going to suspend him for two weeks. And, uh, yeah, then the lawsuit continues. And I get sued. You get sued. It's a cop on the street that gets sued. The department just skates away on it. You know, if they can spend a couple grand and get out of it, they might do it. But they're probably going to throw you under the bus. So <laughs> I used to fall for that. I hope that all the new young cops out there aren't falling for this and that they know better, uh, that they know that the department is there to, to be a bureaucracy and not to support the line staff. And, you know, maybe your immediate supervisor is a decent person and, and uh, does care a little bit, but they don't have any power either. By the time they get any power, they know that 
job is to throw you under the bus. So I guess I can say enjoy work, enjoy your next shift, and just know that all that great training you got that will protect you, it's protecting the department. So, eh, might want to think about a better job. I know I got out of it. Now I do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, do a little hay farming, do a little bit of uh, a little bit of shooting instruction, a little bit of some other stuff, businesses. It's a much better life.